Welcome to Mr. Biz Radio, biz talk for biz owners. During the next half hour, Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth, a leading business advisor and two-time best-selling author, will cover topics that will help business owners run their companies more profitably and more efficiently. If you're ready to stop faking the funk and take your business onward and upward, this show is for you. And now, here's Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth. All right, welcome to another episode of Mr. Biz Radio with me, Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth, and... This week, we're going to talk about a topic that impacts each and every one of us. And I can say that very confidently because whether you are a business owner, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a wantrepreneur, right? You want to be an entrepreneur, but you haven't taken the leap yet. Uh, Whether you work, I have a corporate career, uh, whether you're a stay at home mom, dad, uh, whether you uh, are a lump that lays under a couch every day, doesn't matter you are impacted by what we're going to talk about today, and that is stress. We have with us this week an expert in the, in the, on the topic, and he's going to teach us how, in the third segment, how we can de-stress. He's going to give us some techniques. Now, you may be wondering, okay, great. A lot of people talk about stress, um, and a lot of people think they're experts in stress. Well, let me, let, me give you, let me give you a little bit of an intro of our guest this week, and you tell me if he could teach us about stress and how to de-stress. Mr. Glenn Williams spent 26 years in law enforcement working as a patrol officer, detective, and trainer. Now, it doesn't get a lot more stressful than that job, right? So 26 years of this, he has to have learned a lot from that, right? Otherwise, he would never survive 26 years in that field. He has conducted trainings throughout the United States for law enforcement and civilians in scuba diving, police and evidence diving, underwater post-blast investigation, firearms, patrol rifle, active shooter response, talk about stressful, first aid CPR, again, and has coached individuals in personal self-discovery and self-development. Glenn received a bachelor's degree from the University of Utah in psychology. He started his own business, Glenn Williams Consulting, and currently travels to police departments throughout the U.S. representing his program, Bridging the Gap, an inside look at communication and relations to assist in reducing PTSD, divorce, and suicide. Glenn retired from the force in 2016, and now lives in Draper, Utah with his wife, Deborah. Glenn and Deborah have six children. More stress. <laughs> Kid, kids can be stressful, right? Uh, spread across the U.S. and enjoy visiting them and spoiling the grandchildren. Glenn's greatest joy is making a difference in today's world through speaking, teaching, and writing. He also enjoys traveling, scuba diving, martial arts, long-range shooting, and his dog, Shiloh. Stress relieving, right? Who goes most places with him? So, Glenn, welcome to the show, and I'm very much looking forward to how you can help. Frankly, uh, selfishly, me personally as well. I'm looking forward to this. Ken, it's a pleasure of being here. Um, you've covered all the highlights there. Um, you know, one of the things I discovered is uh, as we go through things is writing things down too. In fact, that's actually what led to my book that I wrote, um, which is a big part of the business now. Um, I had no idea how much marketing was involved and I'm still learning. Yeah. Well, let's, so let's dive into that. So, you know, we, I covered a lot of your background, but so what led you? So from, from, from the police force to the things, different things you did in law enforcement um, that led you into what you're doing now. Well, I developed PTSD and I did everything the normal people do that didn't work. And I ended up divorced. And, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over. So I tried it again and I ended up divorced again. After that second divorce, I spent uh, three years up at my cabin where I rediscovered who I really am. And I had to take a real hard self-accountable look. And that's where if you're going to start anything, whether it's a business or developing your life, that's where you have to start. Um, And we have to, it has to be open, honest, and and self-accountable. Um, and so that's after that, I thought, well, I'm ready to retire, but I still want to make a difference. So I'm not done. And one day I was sitting there and everything just started coming in. I started writing and I had talked to a counselor friend of mine. And when I showed her what I wrote and I didn't even remember it because I just wrote it. Um, she says, there's your program right there. Finish it. And you're, you got it. And that's how my program started um, with another year or so of development after that. But um, now I, I get to still go out and make a difference. And that's my biggest thing. Glenn, I, I got to tell you. So um, 
you know, the fact that not only from the background that, you know, I read in the intro, but also, you know, so many times we have people who try to help with different things, but they haven't actually lived it, right? They went to school for it. They read a bunch of books about it. But they haven't lived it. And especially, you know, I've got some folks uh, that, you know, in my family and, and close friends that are uh, law enforcement officers. And I know the stress that that can create in a marriage. I know the high divorce rates amongst, um, you know, law enforcement uh, folks. And the fact that you've, you know, the, the, the school of hard knocks, right? You've been down that road twice. Um, that just, you know, while that was a completely unfortunate situation in your life, man, that has to make so much of a difference in the difference that you're able to make for folks, because you can say, look, I've been there, done that. You know, I understand what you're going through. I understand. Oh, I bet you had this. I bet you had that. You have real life personal experience with this, not just something you read out of a textbook. Yeah. And I got lucky and got a third chance. And I, the things that I discovered about changing me gave me the opportunity. So I have a very wonderful, open, honest relationship with my wife now. And we have no secrets whatsoever. Cause that was the biggest thing that I did wrong was I quit talking and he, whether it be in your relationships at home or whether it be in your relationships at work, you've got to keep that was wide open. Um, otherwise, um, that just creates blockages in the relationship and that's going nowhere. And that's only going to hurt you as well as your business. Well, I got to tell you, Glenn, I, I, even though what I do is nowhere, even, even remotely close to as stressful as what you had. I understand that because there are times when I don't, and, and it's not purposeful and I'm not trying to be secretive, but you know, there might be things as an entrepreneur, as a business owner that happen that are, negative events. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shield my family from that. And again, it's not that I'm trying to purposely be uh, secretive or, 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 you know, not being transparent, but it's like, eh, I'll handle that on my own. I'll keep that in here. And I keep it in here and I keep it in here and I don't share it. And then what's happened to me, and again, way smaller than, than uh, a version of it than what I'm sure you dealt with, but you know, that stuff starts to build up after a while. And then the people around you, when it starts to manifest, they go, what's wrong with, what's wrong with Ken? Like what, what's wrong, you know? And it's because I haven't been open. Exactly. And um, that's exactly how I started. I wanted to protect my family. I didn't want them to know some of the things that I had seen and had had to do. And so I bottled it up and I just kept it in. They know something's going on and the mind goes to the worst place automatically Oh, you know, and so you know, your wife's going, oh, he's not talking to me. Who's he talking to? Is he having an affair? You know, and things like that. And that creates issues. And then you have issues at home. Those issues transfer to work and work affects home. And it's back and forth. And then it just spirals out of control. And that's why keeping that line of communication wide open is so imperative. Um, and that's one thing I teach in my class and in my book is um, how to take a traumatic event rephrase it so it can be safely shared without blowing your spouse's mind and that can be adapted over to some of the business things because we all do it and especially when things are getting tied to business yeah yeah absolutely yeah i mean oh man I, I can't wait um we're gonna hit a break here though we're gonna come back we'll give the mr biz tip of the week we'll continue talking this week with mr glenn williams and you can find out more at glennwilliamspublicspeaker.com glennwilliamspublicspeaker.com and definitely go out and follow him on linkedin as well We'll come back after the break and we'll continue talking with Glenn on Mr. Biz Radio. Business owners have a continually growing to-do list with little time for revenue producing activities. With Check Off Your List and their experienced team of virtual assistants, you can focus on growing your business. Visit checkoffyourlist.com to learn how Check Off Your List skilled team can handle your day-to-day -day tasks like social media, bookkeeping, calendar maintenance, and much more. Contact Check Off Your List at checkoffyourlist.com or call 888-262-1249 to see how their virtual assistants can help you live to work rather than work to live. Thank you for listening to Mr. Biz Radio. Did you know our show airs seven days a week for more than 30 hours now? If you are in the B2B space and would like to reach thousands of business owners every week, including our more than 250,000 social media followers, our thousands of daily internet radio listeners, our email list fans, and Mr. Biz Solutions members, email us at info at MrBizSolutions.com to become a sponsor. Tap into Mr. Biz Nation to help grow your business. 
check out both of Mr. Biz's national best-selling books, Pathway to Profits, and How to Be a Cash Flow Pro on Amazon. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to Mr. Biz Radio. It's time for the Mr. Biz Tip of the Week, as we always do at the outset of the second segment. And this week's tip, I gotta tell you guys, I'm gonna. It's it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit in your face. Some of these tips are a little fluffy, right? This one's not. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be, be. I'm gonna keep it real with you. If you don't have a budget, a budget, the the, the infamous B word, as I always say, and you don't monitor your progress against it every single month, then you aren't serious about your business's financial success. That's just what it is. Okay, you gotta have a budget. Budget is imperatively important, critically important. And I'll just share one more thing. And I've, I've said this before on the show over the five years plus we've been doing this show. When I meet with a prospective client who needs help and I mention the infamous B word budget and they balk at having a budget, that's a deal breaker for me. If you are an owner and you want to work with me and you don't want to have a budget, then again, like as I say, you're not serious about your financial success because a budget is so, so critically important. So that is the Mr. Biz tip of the week this week. So if you don't have one, get one. If you don't know how to make one, I might know a guy who can help you. Anyway, uh, let's get back into talking to Mr. Glenn Williams this week. So Glenn, um, man, where do we even go from here? Um, so I guess let's talk a little bit about what you do now. So, so as you're going around and helping folks, um, you know, kind of what does that look like? Um, it's interesting. I go to a lot of conferences and throughout the country, and then I travel to police departments and um, I have an eight hour presentation on, we start with self accountability because that's where it all starts. If we're going to make a change, it's got to start with us. And then I get talking to, um, people and I, um, when I teach, I don't lecture. I ask questions because everybody has the answers. They just have forgotten them and they don't know them. And that's what I found in life is people ask questions to seek reassurance a lot. They already know what they need to do. And what they should do and sometimes it just takes a little encouragement for that to come out i mean um like my my objective i know if we change the world one person at a time start with myself and then that ripples out to the next person and the next person and i mean one of the first classes i taught was a group from a local police department um in there and they were pretty hardcore you know mr swat and all these guys and one of the guys sat back there with his arms folded and as we're talking about relationships and he says i don't tell my family anything about work. They don't need to know that. They don't need to know what happens there. And I, I looked at him, I said, well, you agree that people are creatures of habit? And he says, well, yeah. And I said, so you're not telling your family anything about 70% of your waking life. And that's without working overtime. What else aren't you telling them? Because it only starts one brick at a time and then it grows and grows and grows. So what else is not being shared? Um, he sat back and folded his arms and said, they just don't need to know. But was interesting, his sergeant was sitting next to him and his sergeant sat forward and started participating and he got into it. So it may not always be the person you're with or talking to. Um, you know, I've discovered this in, in work when I'm at conferences, I'm talking to somebody and then I'll get a call later from somebody I didn't know was listening. And they'll say, hey, can you come talk to us here? Um, and so it, it's funny how those things kind of work, but we just get to be open and honest and put it out there. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the example, again, mine being much, much, uh, a much smaller scale than, than what you dealt with in your law enforcement career. But, you know, uh, the ups and downs of being a business owner, my, my wife's a nurse, you know, she's not a business person whatsoever. You know, our oldest is, is, is graduating with a degree in neuroscience. Like she's not a business person. You know, our, our middle daughter's uh, going for uh, um, education. And, and so it's not that I, am, again, trying to withhold anything or whatever, but it's like, you know, I, maybe I had a big proposal out and that, that would have been like a big, you know, a really big deal. And I didn't get it. And, you know, it's disappointing. And again, I, I try to not, I try to be a positive person and always, and so I'm always trying to project that positivity. And so a lot of times I think that I choose not to, or I'll just say, if, you know, I'll, I'll let my wife know ahead, or maybe the girls know, and they might say, Hey, how'd that go? And I'm like, oh, I didn't turn out too well. And I just leave it at that. 
And, and I think sometimes that's okay, right? At least you've shared what's going on. And it, it, especially with what you deal with, and, and maybe you would disagree with this, what in your law enforcement career and what, what those folks deal with is, you know, I don't think, I'm guessing that you're not saying you need to share every gory detail of everything that happens to you in your day, right? Because some of those things could be traumatic, especially for if you have small children and things like that. But the point is you have to share with them that there was a traumatic event in your day and how it affected you. Is, is that kind of where, where you're leading to, Glenn? Yeah, um, you don't need to share all the gory stuff. In fact, I teach people how to um, rephrase a traumatic event so it can be safely shared. Um, that's one thing they never taught us. And I kind of finally figured it out. It took me about 17 years to figure it out. <laughs> um, and that, so that's one of the big things of my class that I teach now. Um, the stress, what I'm discovering, uh, you know, running my own business, I do my own marketing, I do everything because I'm, I'm me and that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. And I, it's a whole different kind of stress, but it's still stress. And it makes it, uh, so there's days I come home and I just have a pounding headache and I'm going, oh man, I, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> but I do because I still want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'm learning, you know, I'm learning all kinds of techniques. I'm technologically challenged. So I'm learning how to do a website. I'm learning how to do um, multi or social media marketing. I, I mean, all stuff that I never even dreamed of five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I am, I am as well. Like I have things in the business that you, we all have them, right? You, you got things you really enjoy doing. Yeah. And so you dive right into those. And then at least for myself, the things I don't enjoy doing, what I find is I procrastinate the heck out of them. And then it becomes a deadline and I have to like cram it in to get it done. And then I'm, then I'm even more stressed about it or more irritated that I have to do it. What I, what I found though, Glenn, how I relieve that stress is those things I, I delegate them as, as quickly and as soon as I can. I'll find a, a contractor uh, that, that can help me with that. That's in their wheelhouse that they're really good at it. So at least from a business perspective, that's how I can at least relieve some of that stress for me. I, I agree on that because I've started doing that. I, the things that would take me eight hours to do, it takes an expert an hour and I don't need that stress um, at all. And so, yes, delegating and taking one, figuring out one step at a time, which step to get to each one. And if you have somebody, then more power to you. If you don't, then find somebody. Yeah, it's funny. I, I had a, uh, I was on a, in a group and talking to someone and someone that was asking me, and they're like, well, how do you know what things to delegate? And I just right off the cuff, I told them, you, you'll probably appreciate this, Glenn. I said, for one week, as you go through your days, anything that you have to do that makes you roll your eyes, you should consider delegating that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, that's perfect. In fact, I'm going to steal that. Um, for me, that's about 80% of what I do, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, because I'm, I'm just not a great records keeper. I'm not a uh, great marketer. Um, I'm a good trainer, a good teacher, and I write good programs. And I actually write good books, and that's what I do. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and so stick in your wheelhouse. You know, I, I tell uh, business owners this all the time is you got to stay in your wheelhouse. Do the things that you're good at because we all like doing, generally speaking, you like to do things that you're good at, right? Because you're good at it. Michael Jordan likes to play basketball because he's really good at it. He might not like to play chess because maybe he's not a good chess player. So uh, anyway, we're up against a break here. Uh, lots more to talk about here with Glenn Williams. Again, go out, find more on his website, glennwilliamspublicspeaker.com. And back after the break, I promise we're going to get into some techniques that Glenn is going to help us how to de-stress. Are you ready to automate your business? Automation is the key to scaling a business and building wealth. It's also one of the most difficult things for a small business owner to do on their own. If you're looking for help with automation, Pulse Technology CRM can help. We have an exclusive offer for Mr. Biz Nation. We will build everything for free, even if it's a sophisticated funnel. Visit thepulsespot.com forward slash Mr. Biz for this exclusive offer. If you find listening to Mr. Biz Radio is helpful, imagine having live access to not only Mr. Biz, but also five other trusted business experts. It's true. You can have live access to your very own CFO, plus a business attorney, a website and digital marketing expert, a sales and growth guru, a financing professional, 
and a customer experience master. Visit MrBizSolutions.com to learn more. Join Mr. Biz Nation at MrBizSolutions.com. To submit questions to the show, email them to info at MrBizSolutions.com. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to the show. So let's, uh, I, I don't want to belabor this because I want to get into this. I know, I know you have a lot to share on this, Glenn. Um, I, it, I know you had mentioned before, I think uh, you've alluded to uh, earlier, is you have you figured out a way, it took you 17 years to, to, to take, you know, traumatic or stressful events and, and be able to, you know, put them into a way that you can share with, with family members or significant others, et cetera. Why don't we start with that? What is, what is a way we can do that? That's a two-hour session in my eight-hour course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hi, real quick highlights. Mm -hmm. Um you take a self-accountable look as you go through the event. First off, write it down in every detail. It's called that's called journaling, and that actually helps your mind realize, okay, it's okay to let this stuff out. Because if you don't talk about these things, it'll eat you alive. So you write it out. Then go back and take a second look at it and look at it self-accountably. What did I do? For example, um, I have a case where I ran through a door while shots were being fired, um, and somebody was killed inside and I had to witness all of the, the things that occurred there. Um, but, but what I can do is share that self countably shots are being fired. I drew my weapon. I yelled on my radio when I went through the door shots being fired and everybody knew where I was at. I went in, I saw the bad guy, took him down, put him in handcuffs. There's a little more to it, obviously than that. And then I went and checked on the victim and unfortunately uh, she did not make it. Um, that's pretty self accountable and there's there's a lot more t into it, but for time wise i'm cutting it real short. Um, what did I do, I can say what I did without sharing all the garbage. And that's um, an easy way to break that down. Well, so you, as you say that Glenn I, I mean I, i'm not just saying this, I think that was excellent because as you were as you were reframing it, uh, I guess I, I could picture it in my head. And I didn't picture the blood and guts and gore of the situation. I, it was a very, the picture I got from your story was very clean, but I understood the, the, the severity of the situation at the same time. Yeah. And it was safe to share that way. And that's the whole point. Keep that yeah, absolutely. By sharing it safely. That keeps that communication open. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, so along those same lines, what are some, what are some techniques we can use when we are stressed, when we are just absolutely overwhelmed with stress, whatever it may be, whatever the event that caused it, business-wise, personal-wise, whatever it may be, what are some things that you have learned over the years that would help us de-stress in those situations? I'm going to start in general. First off, exercise. Um, if you do, ride a bike, run they call it the runner's high or um, getting in the zone. Or if you play basketball, go do something physically active because that gets those endorphins in your system going. And that gives you that feeling of self and a good feeling. Um, going out in nature is amazing for healing. So I love to take walks up in the mountains and go through and just see the trees and listen to the uh, breeze go through the aspen leaves and things like that. Um, and then if you have a pet, I have a dog and he goes everywhere with me and uh, he, he'll come and curl up at my feet. And in fact, he is right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, just, just the feeling of getting outside myself and looking at what I can do for him, not thinking about self, um, but thinking about others and other things is a great way to de-stress. But then we can get into some specifics. Um, breathing is critical. And there's several, I mean, you can even just think about the other, well, the other night I couldn't sleep. I was laying there just tossing and turning and I finally went, okay, breathe. And I started concentrating on my breathing and I breathe in my, um, in my nose, one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four, out my mouth, one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four. And I did that. And after about doing that four or five times, all the stuff that was in my head that was keeping me up was gone and I fell asleep. Uh, but that's actually a type of meditation. And I know officers are taught, we do that when we're going into a real stressful situation. Um, and you can make it even as simple as just concentrating on in and out. 
in and out and think about your breathing. Um, one thing that I've found I really like, and my wife actually introduced me to this is massage. Go get a massage. And if you just let it go and you're not with a talkative masseuse, <laughs> everything just disappears. And that's an awesome uh, way to de-stress. Uh, and there's so many other outside the box things like uh, singing bowls or Tibetan bowls, the humming tone and the vibrations just relaxes you so much. Um, very similar to have being in a good massage. Those are just a whole bunch of ones that I've tried that work. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, Glenn, the one, uh, it's, it's, I love them all, but I have also done the breathing. Yeah. Um, and I, from, and I, it was from athletics for me when I was in a stressful situation and, you know, I'm playing basketball and I'm, I'm going to the free throw line with less than 10 seconds left. And, you know, we're down one and I'm shooting two free throws. It's, and, and it, originally it was, I call it five, five, five. And I, I would I literally inhale for five seconds, inhale very slowly, right? Five seconds. I'd hold it for five and I'd release it for five. So release it very slowly. And now I do seven, seven, seven. I don't know if that's because I have more lung capacity or I'm more stressed. I don't know what it is, Glenn. I'm just going to go with it though. But um, I've shared that with other folks too, is any, you know, like it takes you, you know, 21 seconds, 25 seconds in total, maybe whatever. So you can't do it in five seconds or whatever, but I'll tell you, man, I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm so focused on the actual breathing that I, I, I go out of mind with the situation and it just helps me so much. Is, is that kind of what you think is really what's going on there that really why it helps so much? Absolutely. Get out of that head. And, and when you're concentrating on your breathing, you're not thinking about all the stuff that's stressing you. And, and if you do that, even just for a couple of minutes, it'll clear your head. It'll clear everything. And that stress is then gone. Yeah, I'll tell you, if I do that, if I do seven, 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 if I do that two consecutive times with, with, you know, whatever, five or 10 seconds in between, I, I mean, it's the, the difference. If I could measure it somehow, the level of cortisol in my blood or whatever, I don't know, but between before I begin and after the second one, I mean, I mean, every single time, it doesn't matter how stressed I am, you know, when I, when I, my weightlifting career, I would do it in my personal life. When I've got a stressful situation, I, we were in a um, car accident. Um, no one got hurt or anything, but I was very stressed. And I, it, it, as soon as it happened, before I got out, because I'll be honest with you, I was super angry. And I know that was not going to be you know, helpful to the situation. <laughs> so, uh, And it just calmed me down, put me where I needed to be in the right frame of mind, be able to handle the situation in, a, in an appropriate manner without you know, anything, you know, crazy happening or anything like that. And man, it's just so, for me personally, it's super powerful. It is. And like, it can be used anywhere, anytime. Um, and, you know, standing out in the hallway, waiting outside a door to go into an important meeting um, with, you know, it could be your biggest client or your CEO or whoever. Um, when I get ready to go speak, um, if I have, you know, a hundred people I'm walking up in front of, um, I get a little nervous, not as bad as I used to, but I still, okay, breathe breathe now okay i'm ready to go um you know and those are all um minor things but even um you've got some stress with you know, dealing with your accountant at work um and that's one that always stresses everybody at least it does me um <laughs> then yeah um i can just calm down and then at least i can answer questions um somewhat intelligently yeah yeah i, I love it i love it i, I like i said i I loved all the ones you said, but that one, for whatever reason, it just uh, really hit home for me. And I've used it. Gosh, man, I've used that for easily 20 years, um, easily. Um, again, this week, I've been talking with Mr. Glenn Williams, who's the founder and CEO of Glenn Williams Consulting. You can find out more at glennwilliamspublicspeaker.com. Glenn, time has flown by, of course, as it always does. Um, I really loved having you on the show. You shared some tremendous insights. I really appreciate you being on. I appreciate the opportunity and Good luck to everybody out there. Yeah, appreciate it, Glenn. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, guys. And as always, don't forget, cash flow is king. This has been Mr. Biz Radio. To learn how to become part of Mr. Biz Nation, visit MrBizSolutions.com. 
For access to free weekly content, subscribe to the Mr. Biz YouTube channel and follow him on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. To listen to archive shows, you can find them on the Mr. Biz Solutions website.